Uh, one thing that has struck me about the WNBA, just looking from the outside in, and Jacinta and Kiki, you can speak to this obviously better, but there seems to be a strong sisterhood, uh, camaraderie there that might not be evident in other sports. Just tell me, being part of that, uh, what makes it so special that it, it really seems like it's one unit pulling together? Well, I haven't been there in a while, but when I was there, uh, it's it's definitely a sisterhood. It's it's kind of like you you share that that bond that hey, we all made it, we got here, um, and we're working hard to to stay here and keep the the game uh, prevalent. All right, well, um, I'd like to welcome uh, both of you to the show. This is the first uh, basketball player show that we have here on Game Changers. And I, I believe I'm surrounded by uh, two of the uh, elite that ever came out of uh, Florida. Uh, Kiki Herbert Harrigan, uh, thanks for, for joining us. And uh, Kiki is now playing for the Minnesota Lynx of the WNBA. She was the sixth overall pick in the 2020 WNBA draft, and she's been so kind to join us. So thank you, Kiki, for joining us. Thank you, Kiki. We appreciate your time. And thank also, you. Jacinta Monroe uh, herself, uh, one of the greats to come out of Florida. She was also the number two pick, but as I said, ironically enough, 10 years ago in 2010. And Jacinta, it's, it's a real pleasure uh, having you on as 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 a co-host would be. Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Uh, I kind of didn't want to be dated, but it's it's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna let that slide. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Now, nah, thanks for having me on, Faith. Okay, no, no worries, no worries. So, Kiki, uh, just tell us about how your life has changed since uh, leading South Carolina, helping lead South Carolina to the national title and that whole process in getting yourself prepared for that next level. Uh, how, how has that been? Um, it's been great. Um, you know, very different. This year is a very different year, you know, in a lot of aspects. Um, I've just, you know, since I've been home, I've been working, you know, working out every day, preparing myself for the draft. And um, I got up to Minnesota. Uh, can't remember the date. But when I got up to Minnesota, just, I mean, I just kept working out. And just kept trying to be better, you know, trying to help my team to win a championship here at Minnesota. Okay. And uh, just tell me how the team is doing right now and uh, your most recent game. Sorry? Just tell me how Minnesota is doing right now and how you're adjusting to the WNBA. Um, we're doing pretty good right now. Um, I, I feel like I'm adjusting to the WNBA very well. Uh, for me, it's a process. So just, you know, taking everything in, especially my rookie year, you know, taking everything in, you know, from my coaching staff and all, you know, the veteran players on my team. Uh, I have some assistant coaches that, that's been in my position that played in the WNBA. So I'm really just trying to soak everything in. Okay. And and Jacinta, uh, what do you remember from from that process for you going from Stranahan being All-State Player of the Year and a similar path? Uh, for both of you, play the year in your respective classes, and then moving on to stardom at the next level for you with FSU, and then uh, being drafted by the Mystics. Uh, just, just take me back a little bit how that was uh, on your journey. Way back. All right. Um, well, in high school, I had a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed the game, but then the transition into college, it became – uh, more serious. It, it became more of a job, obviously, and um, you had to take your, your, your workload as far as classes and basketball very seriously. Um, so I got better there. My IQ um, got higher as I continued to play against like some of the best in the ACC. Um, and then transitioning into the WNBA, um, like Kiki mentioned before, the pace is definitely different. Everybody's strong, everybody's fast, and everybody's tall. So it's it's like um, you have to you have to adjust quickly. Um, unfortunately for me, my body didn't adjust uh, as as I wanted to at the beginning. Uh, so I spent like half the season hurt. 
Um, but I put on some pounds now, so, you know, <laughs> eating a little bit of cornbread, some muffins, I'm good to go now. <laughs> okay. And Kiki, when did you kind of realize that uh, of how much of a more business uh, this basketball became? At, at what point in your career did you realize that that um, this would be a business and you had to stand out that much more than you had previously? Can you repeat the last part of that question, please? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. At what point did you realize that this would become a business and that you had to stand out even more than you did previously? Um, definitely when I got to college. I mean, it's definitely more serious when you get to college. Um, it's a lot more stuff that you have to do. Um, you know, balancing your time between academics and basketball, obviously. Um, so really when I got to college, um, I had dreamed to, you know, going to the WNBA since I, you know, first entered high school. That's the first thing I told my coach. So, um, just kind of taking it, uh, it kind of got more serious in college, I say. Okay. And as Jacinta was uh, actually saying earlier, um, at what point, I guess everybody has that one point, did you realize that you were in that conversation as far as pro and WNBA. At what point in your career did you realize that 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 you would be in the NBA? Um, I have a lot of confidence in myself. So ever since I was in high school I really believed that I could play in the WNBA. Um really when I got to college, you know, and my coaches, you know, telling me that I have, you know, I had the potential to, you know, be a pro athlete. So I mean that definitely fueled it and I just continued to work hard to achieve my dream. Okay. Sure. And Jay, anything you want to uh, uh, interject here? Absolutely. Um, first off, you were coached by one of the legends. I love Don Staley. Um, she's amazing. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of being coached by her transitioning into uh, my first WNBA season. It was like uh, the some trial, some practice we had in Connecticut with uh, the national team. Um, and she's she's legit. So yeah, kudos to uh, you learning under her. Thank and you. my other question um, is, what what team did you grow up um, idolizing? I guess in the in the league um, when you were coming up watching WNBA and realizing that this could be an actuality and not just a dream. Um, really, when I grew up, well, I moved to Miami in the sixth grade. So growing mm -hmm. up in the Caribbean, it was, uh, you know, no girls played basketball. So I grew up playing right. with all the boys. Um, right. And I really, I really enjoyed watching Maya Moore play. Mm -hmm. That was somebody I watched a lot in the WNBA. Right. Right. Okay. Also, Sylvia Files when I moved to Miami. Big Seal. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's a legend. I love her. And, and uh, you're, both of you obviously have a connection to... Uh, Sylvia Files, and she is considered, if not the best big, uh, to come out of uh, at least South Florida. I mean, maybe even Florida itself. And, and just tell me about your connection to Sylvia and how um, her career has impacted both of you. I'll let Kiki start. Um, oh, okay. Um, she's been a mentor to me, you know, pretty much ever since I moved to Miami and I started playing for the Miami Suns. I played for her travel team, Team Files as nice. well. Nice. Um, yeah. She's been somebody, you know, that I could, you know, go to and talk to about anything, you know, especially basketball-wise. Um, when I was making my college decision, she was a part of that, too. I spoke, I was, you know, spoke to her about that and stuff like that. So she's, she's pretty much somebody that I could go to and talk to about anything. She's like a mentor to me. Yeah. She's a great spirit. Like, she's one of the the veterans in the league that – always like remained the same like she she was legit and she didn't mind talking to the rookies or the younger athletes um at all and she was she was just humble she was dominant and humble um uh, i think uh she was three years um older than i was mm -hmm. or she is three years older than i was so um she played um gulliver prep and Praise God, we never played them. That's all I'm going to say. But <laughs> I grew up watching her stats um, every time we had a game. And I would look at the Miami area girl stats. And she would be 
like all across it, filling up stat sheet, blocks, rebounds, points, all of that. And I was just like, man, um, she's going to the league. And when she did, I, I knew for sure that I could come out of South Florida and do the same thing, but I pretty much idolized her. Um, and like I said, thank God I never had to play against her. So, well, no doubt. Uh, and I was fortunate to uh, to see Sylvia in high school and a woman among girls, so to speak. And uh, what I always admired, maybe most about her, is her intensity. She mm -hmm. never, her energy level never dropped off in the game, whether they're up right. by three or up by twenty. He left it all out on the court, and and that must be hard to do when every game uh, you are the target. You're going to get a double team or a triple team, and just yes. physically, for her to always bring that energy, that that was amazing to me. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She's she's deceivingly energetic. Like you would think, like uh, a traditional big. You okay? You could tire her about sense of double teams at them. No, right. not not Sylvia. <laughs> she's gonna give it to you the entire game. Right. Right. PK, how is she in practice? Uh, I've seen a couple of pictures. Uh, she's kind of talking to you. It looks like practice. And, and what has she uh, maybe imparted on you the most uh, during these uh, practices and games? Um, you know, I mean, whenever I have any questions in, um, in practice, you know, about any plays, any options in the plays, you know, I can go to her and she'll break it down all the way for me, you know, so I can really understand. So, I mean, it's just been great having her. You know, as a mentor, and you know, playing on the same team as her has been great for me. Okay, all right. And and what area of your game do you think um, you really want to work on uh, since you've gotten to the league now? Is there is there one area that you feel really really have to put a lot of time in? Um, I'll definitely say you know, in the off season, I have to get in the weight room. <laughs> okay, that's a big part. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and since you're playing that, that power forward position, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, so, Kiki, tell me about your start. You grew up in the Caribbean. Tell me where. And uh, did you happen to maybe play soccer and get that kind of foot-eye coordination? Just tell me about growing up and you said no other girl was playing basketball at the time. That, that's very interesting. Can, can you touch on that a right. Um, I grew up in a small island in the crib, and it's called Angola. Okay. Um, I actually played tennis. I played tennis, volleyball, netball. I did high jump. I was kind of an all-around athlete. Mm -hmm. I just loved sports, nice. so I grew up doing that. Um, like I said before, grew up playing with all boys. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Okay. Grew up playing a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. I also played soccer, too, in middle school. <laughs> right. Okay. And, and and why did you choose basketball, so to speak, over the other sports? Um, when I started playing organized basketball in middle school, I really fell in love with the game. Um, but when I really got to high school, is when I really started taking it seriously. You know, started having. You know, I've been had dreams of going to the WNBA, but I started really taking it serious when I, as soon as I got to high school. Okay. And, and, and just since how is it for you, um, just kind of uh, developing from maybe middle school and always, uh, you know, uh, knowing that, you know, people are coming for you, so to speak. Uh, you, you're obviously one, maybe one of the taller girls, and, and you know that you were the focus of the other team's defense. Just tell me how you, how you managed to always take it up another level each year as far as skill-wise and mentally. Um, well, much like Kiki, I grew up playing with all boys, pretty much, like even in middle school, um, before classes would start, I'd be out on the courts at Parkway playing, getting sweaty. My mom hated it, but getting sweaty <laughs> against the boys and whatnot, having to change my clothes. And, um, it, it was just fun. So I didn't have like any, any mental qualms about playing or making mistakes, um, I I played the guard position. I just grew too tall. <laughs> so it's like um, I had a knack for the game, all around game. Um, and I loved watching Kobe and Steve Nash and um, players like that in that era. So 
I grew up watching them and just trying to emulate their game. And like I said, playing against guys that are taller than me or just just as just as tall as I am, it, it really helped. And I just I always wanted to to learn more and grow more in the game. So um, I never stopped being a student of the game. So it, it helped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one question that you want to ask. Uh, both of you as lottery picks is obviously the game has, has changed so much. They, they talk about the men's game, but I think uh, too often overlooked is the women's game. Just how overall athletic it has gotten. Uh, you, you see, you know, 6'5 guards now and 6'6 six, six guards, and that was probably unheard of 20 years ago. Uh, but just tell me about uh, just this jump in, in how different the game is and where do you see it going from here? That's a question for both of you. You can go, you can start. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, basically I feel like the, the men's and women's game changes um, at the same pace, um, so to speak, because um, if you look, there aren't any traditional bigs um, that are in the NBA anymore. You have to be able to step out and shoot the three like Anthony Davis, you know, KD is pretty much a seven foot sniper. Um, and then you look around the WNBA and the same thing can be said. You got Asia Wilson, Candace Parker, and all these, you know, so-called post players that can step out and play any position that you need them to play or, or stretch, stretch any of the, the players um, that they're guarding um, or that are guarding them um, out to the perimeter. So it's like, I feel like it's changed at the same pace. Um, and it's just, it, it speaks to the, the IQ of the players and the willingness for players to become more well-rounded. Pretty much positionless as basketball. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right, everybody gotta be talented. Everybody just has to be an athlete, pretty much. And Definitely. you'll be fine. Okay, and Kiki, talk about your game and how you see your game evolving along with, uh, you know, especially from your position, the power forward and, and just really stretching out to kind of stretch for How do you see your whole game maybe materialize in the next three or four years? Um, I knew go coming into the WNBA that I'll be an undersized post player. Um, I mean, just, just using my speed and my agility, I mean, just working on different parts of your game. Keep watching film. That's what I've been doing. Keep watching film on myself and trying to, you know, get better in all the areas, ball handling, you know, shooting off the dribble and just trying to keep getting better. Okay. Right. Film is so important. Like That's in college, I would fall asleep during some film <laughs> sessions, but it's all I watch now. Like I love film. It's crazy how your mindset changes. I don't know if that's the same for you, Kiki, but for me. No, it is. Film like is said, different. Yeah, <laughs> but in college, I was just like, just give me scout report. <laughs> but now it's like I, I consume film all the time. Right. Yeah. Take, take me through for maybe some uh, young players that might be watching. Take it through a typical college day. I, I don't know if if uh, most young athletes really realize how much uh, time you put in uh, both on and off the court. But just take me, if you will, both of you, to a typical uh, in-season day uh, during the season. My freshman year going into college, I have weights in the morning from about 6 to 7 in the morning. Then I have class at 8 o'clock, so you got to rush to your room, get breakfast, you know, shower, get dressed for class, and then um, I have I have practice from like 12.30 to 3.30. Then right after that, you got to rush to shower, get to study hall, and study hall was pretty long for me. You know, I wasn't big on academics, so study hall was pretty long for me. And I'll be done by 7, 8 o'clock, and then time to eat, go to, you know, shower, go to bed, and start the day over. Same thing over the next day. Basically, that's yeah. pretty much sums it up. Like, and you're still you, expected you. to, oh, sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. But, go you ahead. know, you're, you're still expected to, you know, go to the gym and put up extra shots additional to that. So, For I mean, sure. For sure. Wow. So I know, a lot, I know a lot of people see the, you know, the game days and, and it's three hours that you're playing there, but uh, might not really appreciate 
all the hard work that goes in and, and the grind, you know, in terms of not only getting to that level, but staying at that level. Because, you know, each year somebody's coming to get your position pretty For much. Sure. Right. The, the next star from, from high school is coming to move you up. Yes, sir. Right. So, Kiki, the fact that you play for uh, the Lynx, I think, and I was just looking at the sequence of time here in terms of uh, this social justice movement that we are all witnessing. You were drafted, I believe, mid-April, correct? Mm -hmm. And I think maybe five or six weeks later, we had the George Floyd incident in that city. So take us, take us there, how you saw everything unfolded, what kind of emotions, just new to the city, just take us there and, and how you all took everything in, uh, in terms of all that there within a six week period and since that time. You know, that could have been, you know, your father, brother, cousin, you know, it's crazy how that happened, um, really sad situation. Um, when I got up to Minnesota, actually, uh, it was a whole bunch of protests, you know, almost every other day, every day, you know, going on around our hotel. So, um, also, we got uh, our team got on a call with you know the chief of police and all the people, the wow. mayor and all the people that was involved there. You know, talking about the situation, and, um, you know what they plan on doing and stuff like that. So that was that was pretty good, you know, for us and you know to hear from them and what they're you know what's going on in terms of that part. Okay, and uh, just tell me, maybe speak on how the WNBA has really gotten behind. Uh, this movement and really been a force. A number of players, as as you both well know, have actually taken the whole season off to uh, advocate for social justice. And uh, just just maybe speak on that first, just into maybe you and, and then Kiki, as far as as the manner in which the WNBA has really come out in full force. Um. I actually think the WNBA has always been a front runner when it comes to social justice or any type of movement um, that's going on. Any any kind of, uh, of social action that needs to be taken, I feel like the players in the WNBA do a great job at standing up for uh, what they believe in and what values they share, um, especially most recently with the George Floyd and Amar Aubrey situation going back to LGBT rights and um, uh, just just anything like they're they're not just athletes and they're after they finish playing basketball you go right to your home your regular I mean, I think it's taxes great. so oh, it's sorry. like oh no you're fine <laughs> um, so it's like the I, I wasn't surprised that they stepped up to the plate the way they did because like I said, the WNBA, that's, that's what they're about um, as far as the players go. <laughs> you know, it's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than basketball. So, I mean, for all these women, you know, to use their platform is very, for like, you know, for all of us to use our platform is very important, you know, to speak on what's right and what we believe in. So I feel like WNBA, he's been doing a great job of that. For sure. Okay. Uh, how about Maya Moore, uh, one of the all-time greats, uh, taking the whole season off to uh, get Jonathan Irons uh, free from prison? Uh, what does that say about uh, Maya Moore's character? Already, uh, you know, uh, going to be a Hall of Famer without question. But mm -hmm. what does that say about uh, Maya Moore's character to to both of you? I mean, I think that's big time what she did, you know, putting her career to the side to, you know, to get an innocent man free from prison after so many years, I think. I mean, it just says a lot about her, and that's just great. It's great what she did. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, and to add, uh, again, there's no surprise there to me, because um, Maya Moore has always been somebody that, stands firm and what she believes in stands firm and her beliefs and is not afraid to step up to the plate and uh just take initiative um with things she's always been a leader so uh i think it's amazing what she's doing and uh it's i feel like she she probably won't stop there 
You know what I mean? Like that's that's just one. And she she saw her success in that. So I feel like the sky's the limit for what she'll do next. Okay. Definitely. And not to overlook, um, you know, we, we have to talk about Kobe Bryant and obviously we know about his Hall of Fame career, but I, I want, I'm going to ask both of you to speak on the impact that he had on the WNBA and obviously Gigi, uh, she was a star of her, she was already a star uh, in her own right. Just tell me about Kobe coming, really putting himself behind the WNBA. I think for the first time, an NBA superstar is that ever since they existed. It was meant to be both now and going forward. Um, I definitely feel like he was a great advocate, you know, for the women's game. Um, really sad what happened. Um, I was actually in the game when I heard about it. Uh, it was pretty devastating hearing about it. Um, and I had no doubt in my mind that, you know, Gigi would have made, made it to the WNBA. So, for I mean, sure. yeah. So, I mean, it's sad. I was very sad when I heard about the news. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I was, um, I was overseas um, probably watching film. Actually, I was eating dinner. I know exactly where I was. I was at the table eating dinner um, and going over some film before our next game and my phone started blowing up. So uh, it took me a while to believe it, but I was definitely devastated because again, I grew up emulating his game and wanting to be like him. And when he first came out, he was the fro Kobe. I thought I was going to get married to him, but uh, you know, major respect to Vanessa, but that was just, you know, my thought process. But yeah, like I, I, I idolized him. Like I, I was, I'm still a junkie for Kobe and I, I still talk about him like he's, you know, still here. I talk about him in the present tense a lot, but um, he was definitely a major ambassador for the WNBA, um, always at the Sparks game. When I would be um, training in LA, uh, I would see him at the Sparks game sometimes. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's a, that's a big, a big blow for the WNBA because he would have definitely worked with, um, the commissioner to to get some things moving forward and to, to continue to grow the game. And obviously, like Kiki said, uh, Gigi would have been there. And I wouldn't have been surprised if he would have, you know, bought a franchise or created his own team um, somewhere down the line. But it's definitely devastating. And I still sometimes don't believe it. But yeah, it's it's a tough one to swallow. Yeah. Do you see anybody in the NBA ranks uh, ready to pick up that slack or fill that, fill that void? I, I know that uh, Kyrie donated, uh, I think, $1.5 million to cover salaries of players that opted out uh, this season. Um, do you see anybody right now that you think would be uh, willing and able to jump into some, some of that role that, that Kobe was uh, providing? Um, I've seen a lot more. I know when our season was about to start, I've seen a lot more um, NBA players showing, you know, their respect to the WNBA and, you know, bringing awareness to the WNBA. So I say that's great. You know, that's a step forward. You know, there's a lot of players showing support, wearing the orange uh, WNBA hoodie, you know, to their games and stuff like that. So I feel like that's, I mean, that's taking a step forward. So that's great. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, and Jay, uh, how about you? Uh, do you think it's going to be collective effort or or one individual? Or would you rather be a collective effort and not just uh, wait for one such person to step forward? Um, I feel like it should be a collective effort um, in a way because the WNBA is the NBA's, you know, partner or sister league. You know what I mean? Um, so it's it's like a there there's a camaraderie there, and some of the NBA players show up to the the WNBA games and vice versa. Um, but like I said, it's it's going to be tough shoes to fill as far as what Kobe had you know plans on doing and how much he was uh, talking to uh, league personnel to to forward the game and. Uh, but I feel like it can be done. I'm not sure who will step up. Um, to fill that role, but I feel like 
the door is wide open for it to happen. And like Kiki said, there, there's a lot of advocacy um, from a lot of the NBA players, especially now. So it's, it's, it's good to see. Right. Uh, one thing that has struck me about the WNBA, just looking from the outside in, and, and um, Jacinta and Kiki, you can speak to this obviously better, but there seems to be a strong sisterhood uh, camaraderie there that might not be evident in other sports. Just tell me, being part of that, uh, what makes it so special that it, it really seems like it's one unit pulling together? I'll let you take the first. Okay. Um, well, I haven't been there in a while, but when I was there, uh, it's it's definitely a sisterhood. It's it's kind of like you you share that that bond that hey, we all made it, we got here, um, and we're working hard to to stay here and keep the the game uh, prevalent and to continue to. Uh, push push the push the game forward and get more uh marketing more media more publicity um just just more eyes on the game i feel like there's a sisterhood in that like there there should be a, a bigger respect for professional women athletes you know what i mean um there's a lot of grind that goes into becoming a professional basketball player regardless if you're male or female and I feel like um, that those women, they work hard day in and day out to keep their bodies in pristine condition and to get better. Um, and so, like I said, there's just a bond in that, that each player shares, regardless if they're competing or not against each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kiki, and, and you're, you're a couple months in. Um, how, how has that been for you as far as, as I said, just being part Definitely. of the and this uh, oneness about them. Um, it's definitely a sisterhood. Um, just since they pretty much covered it all. Um, I'll just say, and then, you know, just growing up playing against, you know, a lot of these girls playing against them in travel basketball, right. playing yeah. against them at, um, you know, college, um, mm -hmm. playing with some of the girls, and, you know, just, I mean, it's a great feeling, you know, like like you said, you know, it's to be like, every, you made it, you know, a lot right. of us who's here, you know, dreamed of this since we were little kids. So, I mean, it's, been, it's a great feeling sure. to be here and be a part of it. Okay. For sure. Shout out to the soul. <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> Suns, Miami Suns. <laughs> yep. Kiki. What do you, how do you want to use this game um, to put yourself on the map and more than just winning championships? Uh, how can you use uh, basketball as a vehicle to, um, to impact, this, impact this world? Um, the game of basketball has been great to me. I mean, you know, I was able to go to college on a full scholarship. I mean, that's great. Um, you know, basketball has helped me to travel to places that I've never been before. So that's another thing. Um, yeah, I mean, basketball has just been great to me, helped me out a lot. Uh, you know, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't play basketball. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how about you, Jay? What, what the game has meant for you and how, how it impacted uh, uh, your life? And I also want you to speak to maybe some, some young girls uh, young athletes on the whole, and um, just kind of relay your experiences. If you could tell them maybe one or two things, what that would be. Um, so, first off, basketball has definitely been uh, a tool that has allowed me to have some of the best experiences in my life. Um, you know, you get to... I'll just break it completely down and be super simple about it. You get to dribble a ball and travel the world for free. Like that's one of the coolest things that anybody could ever experience. And I've been doing it since high school. Um, and I've been 
racking up Delta points, traveling for free for 10 years, uh, playing professionally. So yeah. I don't take that for granted at all. But um, I, I feel like it's made me more cultured. Um, I've been to almost every continent in the world and uh, have gotten to make and forge so many friendships with so many people. Like most of my friends that I talk to all the time, they live overseas. Um, and so it's, it's been a, a major blessing and I don't take it for granted. I'm glad my body's held up to this point to allow me to um, get to experience different cultures and different languages and things like that. Um, but as far as any younger athletes coming up, um, I say enjoy the process, but respect the process. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are no shortcuts to getting to the, the highest level uh, of professional sports. Um, you have to leave your ego at the door. And, you know, we grew up, you know, getting yelled at by our coaches and taking it on the chin and just getting better. But nowadays I feel like there's a, a sort of privilege that uh, younger kids have. And it's like, you have to be mindful of how you coach them, be mindful of how you talk to them, be mindful of, you know, how hard you push them. But when you want to be a professional, you have to go through the grind. You can't take any shortcuts. You have to go through the hard stuff to get to where you see WNBA players, where you see NBA players. So I just feel like they, they, they have to respect the process and just, you know, take failures on the chin just as much as they, you know, broadcast their successes. Mm -hmm. Wow, well said, well said. You know, Kiki, tell me where the term mad Kiki came from. I, I know you play with this high intensity, especially defensively on the court. And have you had to chat, just kind of adopt that whole mindset in the, end, in the WNBA where Literally everybody's good from one through fourteen. Uh, just tell me where that 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 that, that term kind of came from and the intensity that you bring on the court. Um, <laughs> Mac, you pretty much came from. Uh, I'm a very emotional player. So, um, Definitely come to mess on the side of the ball. Um, I love blocking shots. It's mm. one of the things I'm known for. So, I mean, you know, my celebration is a high step. He put down and all that after blocks. I guess that's where I got the name Matt Kiki from. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me about Kiki just being in this bubble now, which we kind of touched on at the beginning. Uh, how different is, is that for you? Have you totally adjusted uh, playing in a bubble in, in Orlando and not traveling and not playing before fans, just pretty much an empty gym outside of team personnel? Bradenton, they're in Bradenton. You're Bradenton. How's, how's that been, Kiki? Uh, a big adjustment for you? Um, pretty different playing in this bubble. Um, you know, sorry. Yeah, I didn't hear what you said. Big adjustment for you? Um, it is a big adjustment for me in terms of you know not playing with any fans. And then also, um, we only had like about, I would say training camp was about two weeks, you know, to get to know. Wow. So I say that, that has definitely been different and not having as much, you know, preparation leading up to the season. Also, um, we're playing games every other day. So that's very right. different. Um, very different on your body. So you got to, you know, just making sure you take, you're taking care of your body, eating healthy and all that other stuff. But I feel like I'm adjusted to the bubble pretty well. Okay. So if you're if you're playing any other day, then so your practices, that, that's another thing too. You really, uh, your coach has to alter your practices, not go too hard. 
Uh, so, so that's another adjustment in, in itself, correct? For sure. Yes. Um, for us, I know like we have games every other day. So the day in between, you know, sometimes we'll have practice. Other times we'll, you know, have some downtime. But we'll, uh, you know, do a team pool workout. You know, try to keep our body, you know, good. And you know, after that, watching film. We watch a lot mm-hmm. of film. So. Right. Okay. What do you remember most about your, your jump from Flanagan to South Carolina? Was it what you expected? Was it harder? Just, just speak on that a little bit, TP. Um, I mean, it's definitely, college is definitely harder. I mean, you know, in high school, um, practically in high school, you know, when you're a league player, you're uh, better than a lot of the players you play against and stuff like that. So, you know, college is no one practice you got to go hard every day and you know everybody's there for a reason so you just got to go hard every day and you know continue working to grow your game every day so i'll say college is you know definitely even harder in terms of that aspect and, and, and also with academics like i mentioned before academics yeah sure okay does the coaching change uh jacinta in terms of more one-on-one less one-on-one is, is that an adjustment too going from for you, Stranahan, to Florida State? Um, you said the coaching change? Yeah, is, is, the, is the coaching, is the type of coaching any, any different or no real big adjustment is needed? Oh, absolutely. Um, especially from high school to professional. Um, but I'll just do the, the mid jump from high school mm-hmm. to college. Um, like Kiki said, you once you're, you know, one of the best or the best player on your team, it's kind of like you don't need to be really coached. It's, you just have to stay in shape, so to speak, and learn the plays. Um, and the coach is kind of like, well, I won't speak for everybody, but for me, I was kind of like just given a, a, a lot of leeway to just be talented. You know what I mean? Um, but then once you get to college, it's more – of a learning process, a learning curve. You have to learn what uh, a high side closeout is. I didn't know what the heck that was in high school. <laughs> like, who closes out in high school? So it's like, um, I know the gro- the game is growing now and, and, and kids are probably uh, picking up that language, but in college you have to learn so many different terms and uh, different ways to defend and as well as play offense. So it's, it's definitely... Uh, uh, a big jump and then um, professionally you you kind of don't have to be coached as much um, uh, once you get you know four and five years in it's basically uh, doing what you are, are good at and uh, staying focused and watching film you, you pretty much it's pretty much on you to 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 get better um, professionally so the coaches don't have to do a lot of teaching Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, most definitely. And Kiki, how, how about yourself? Um, I'll say, uh, like you said, um, in high school, you know, you're pretty much just playing off talent. Uh, like for me, you know, in college, you have a whole scouting report, you know, when you're about to play a team and you have to know that scout, you know, if your coach is asking sure. you, you got to know what's on that scout. <laughs> you get quiz. <laughs> yes, we definitely got quiz. We didn't have to recite the whole what do you think sets you apart outside of skill and, and, and obviously a lot of hard work, but, but talk about Jacinta and Kiki, talk about sticking with a routine every day for maybe 15 years and not, it's really a lot of sacrifice. Talk about that discipline needed to not only be talented, but to do that routine, that grind, Day in, day out. I mean, it's definitely a, a lot of, you know, hard work and dedication. I'll say for me, you know, high school, well, I'll be away for travel tournaments, you know, basketball is all year round, pretty much, um, especially in high school. You know, when you come from the high school season and you go straight in the travel season. So I say, you know, younger than me, I was like, you know, my friends are, you know, out having fun. And, you know, I'm here playing basketball. But, I mean, that's just something I wanted to do. So I was dedicated, you know, to getting better, earning myself a scholarship and, you know, Okay, and, and for you, Jay, the, the same thing, just, just that discipline, um, 
that discipline and, 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 and sticking with something when you had so many other options to maybe take a day off or sleep in on, on a Saturday morning instead of going running on the beach, for example. Just talk about how all that discipline has really paid off for you. And now you're traveling um, here, as you said, and just meeting all these great cultures and people and, and different personality. Um, well, you definitely have to uh, grow up a little bit faster than your, your peers um, if you if you want to, if you know what you want to do, um, if you know you want to play professionally, you know you want to get to the next level, you know you want a scholarship to college, there are things that you have to put aside and sacrifice in order to get there. And I always, I wasn't, I always knew I wanted to play professionally, especially watching the inaugural WNBA season kickoff. I was like one of the first to get jerseys and all of that. And mm -hmm. I wanted to be like Cynthia Cooper. And um, so that, that spark, um, was lit in me um, since then, but I wasn't always as disciplined. I was a hood rat for a little bit in high school. Like I, I ran with the guys, <laughs> ran with the fellas, um, got in some trouble. But uh, at the end of the day, I always knew I was like, okay, after I'm done, you know, being mischievous, uh, you know, in the neighborhood, I want to go play basketball. And so once I realized that I couldn't put the ball down. I definitely disciplined myself and was like, look, this is what I want to do. I don't care about, uh, you know, hanging out, doing other things. Um, and, you know, I sat my hood rat self down to the side for a little bit so I could, so I could make it, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, uh, like I said, and that discipline just kind of, kind of stuck with me and your coaches in college help you with that discipline. Because again, you're waking up at 630, you really don't have time to do other stuff. Um, you're waking up at 630, you got to run, you got to shower, you got to go to class, you got to come back um, to practice in the afternoon, then you got study hall, then you got to go home, then you got to study some more um, for tests, and then you got to try to get some sound sleep. So it's like, your your day is not your own. And so you, you, you do that for four years, and if four years doesn't keep you disciplined or doesn't set the pace for your discipline, then it's really not in your heart to play. What does it mean to, to, to your family that to be selected number six in a draft that encompasses the whole world? I mean, these teams could have picked anybody from any country in the world, any elite basketball player, but just take it back to draft day. And I really think it's, it's mind boggling for me to be top six in the world, in the world. Uh, Kiki, first you, what a draft day mean to you and your family. And as I said, just being in that elite of elite. And then, and then Jay, I'd like you to speak on that as well. Um, it meant a lot. It was huge, um, pretty surreal feeling that night. You know, to hear name called number six in the draft. Um, something I've dreamed of since I was a little kid. I know especially for me, um, coming from the small island that I came from, uh, left my family at a very young age, you know, chasing the dream of playing basketball. Um, my mom has sacrificed a lot for me, um, you know, during the summer, to, you know, driving me or whether we were flying to all my AAU tournaments and all that. Um, it, just, it just meant a lot. It was a really surreal feeling. And my family, and yeah, shout out to my family and all the people that, you know, kept me focused and supported me throughout my career. Blah, blah, blah. Shout out to the fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, funny story. Um, not so funny when it happened, but funny sure. story now. Um, uh, it draft day was happening. Um, I was told by my coach I was going to get drafted and invited to the draft. So uh, that was a very uh, surreal moment for me. It was like, you know, all my hard work is paid off. It, it, a dream come true. Um, I had been talking to Cynthia Cooper, like, you know, that entire year we had, uh, you know, formed a bond and I felt like I was making her proud, but then draft day comes. Mm -hmm. I'm all cute, got my little skirt on, got my little situation going, <laughs> and I get called, or so I thought. I'm sitting down, and then I hear the Mystic Select, Jacita Moore, 
from Florida State University. And I was like, who is that? <laughs> but like, I, I low key didn't want to get up because I was like, she gonna get my name right. right. Um, but then at the same time, I was like, I don't want to make this awkward. So I got up, but you know, technically, Jacinta Monroe didn't get drafted. It was Jacinta Moore that got drafted from Florida State. So, right. yeah, there's that. Ruined my whole moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never forget. I'm going to tell my grandkids about it and be like, let me tell y'all. What I, I think that's what the European spin on it, Jacinta. I think that's what it was. But you can't put a European spin on Monroe. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Kiki, um, I, I believe you said you had what, uh, maybe five more weeks, six more weeks before the playoffs start. Yeah. And uh, how do you feel the team is playing right now and um, heading into into the playoffs in, in a couple of weeks? Do you, you think that the team is st still needs a couple of weeks to to gel a little bit more? How are you looking at things right now for Minnesota? Um, I feel like we started off playing very good basketball, very unselfish basketball. Um, we shared the ball really well. Um, you know, we have. A, I feel like we have a great group of ladies, and we have a group of ladies that can, you know, win the championship here. Okay, so you think you a good shot um, at the at the chip this year? Minnesota does. Kiki. I think we lost her. Yeah, I think we lost a little bit there. Okay. I, I can hear you now, but oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I didn't hear you. I was just wondering, uh, as far as um, your team's chances to, to win it all and how confident you are right now. I feel very confident in my team right now. Okay. And what is your role when you step on the court as a rookie? What does coach want you to do very well? Um, just to bring the, the fire that I play with, Mad Kiki, like she says. Um, you know, just bring that energy to my team, and you know, when I'm not out there on the court, you know, be my teammates' biggest cheerleader. You know, and just doing whatever they need me to do. Okay, and and that's set the tone defensively, especially. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, Jay, is there anything else you'd like to keep in right now? Um, yeah, tell me about your AAU experience. What was it like um, playing down in in uh, South Florida? How was it um, with my, your teammates? My, who, who are your coaches also? Um, Erica. Erica, uh, Gabriel Lazo. Okay. Uh, got coached a little bit by Boozer. He coaches at Miami High. Okay. Um, yeah, gotcha. but I mean, my AU experience is great with the Miami Suns. Uh, definitely a family atmosphere there. For sure, um, nice. Learned a lot from them. Form, formed mm -hmm. a lot of great bonds. You know, life full of bonds. Uh, nice. My teammates still really close to a lot of my teammates that I played with. So I mean, it's been a great experience. Mhm. Mm Good deal. What was some of your favorite things to eat? Um. Not on the road, but uh, in Miami or in South Florida as a as a whole, because uh, your high school reminds me of one of my favorite places to eat called Flanagan's. So yeah, I love uh, Flanagan's those too. listen the wings, that pasta, I like that pasta. <laughs> that pasta, I like that yes, pasta. yes, <laughs> good stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, man. Um, I, I like eating at Snappers too. <laughs> Word, I like Snappers. House of Mac. So, it's a lot of good places down there. House of Mac. Oh, my God. I want to go there. I want to go there. It's on my bucket it's list. It's yeah, so good. That place is, yeah, that place is. It's seafood mac and cheese, I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, Kiki, if you were to choose a, a team to play for, um, would that be, have you made up your mind yet as far as the U.S. team or, or the British team? Uh, just tell me if you, uh, how, 
how, which way you're leaning, if you're leaning in, and which way right now, as far as the national team? Um, I'm not a U.S. citizen, so I have to go with the British team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that made it to the answer right there. <laughs> yeah. Right. That sums that up. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> and Jay, you, you want a gold medal with the uh, U.S. national team, and, and just I'll speak on that a little bit because I think that that's something that the audience would like to hear about. Can you repeat that again, please? I was asking uh, Jacinta when she played for the uh, U.S. national team, and I believe they won the world championship. Mm -hmm. and, was that in 2010, 2011? Uh, oh, 09. It was oh, 09. Talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah. One of the best experiences ever uh, next to the draft. It was, uh, it was hard, let me tell you. It was, it was really hard. Um, competing against the best um, in your age group. Um, in Colorado, where there's, there's, you know, little to no air compared to, you know, being in South Florida. Um, so the practices were hard, um, it, but it was a lot of fun. It, the, the competition was, was second to none. It was pretty much like uh, playing in a league as far as like the pace and the competition. Um, so you had your dorms, you had to practice like twice a day. Um, with shooting and drills in the, the first part um, and then games in the, the evenings. And so um, once you once you got past like the second cut, then you went overseas for two weeks um, and played against uh, the best overseas. Um, and we, we were like 19, 20 year olds, um, but I know for a fact, some of the girls on the Russian national team were like 30 something when we played wow. against them. There's no way, like <laughs> some of them, they look like they had children. So we were, we were definitely playing, competing against like the, the, the cream of the crop, but it, it was an amazing experience. Um, Maya Moore was on my, my team, oh, okay. uh, Tina Charles, um, uh, Dania Robinson. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, uh, who else? Gentile Lavender, just to name a few, but that yeah. team, it was so much fun. Um, uh, Tiffany Hayes, I forgot she was on the team as well. It was just, we had so much fun there um, for like the two weeks we were gone, competed hard um, and, and had an amazing time. So it was, it's something that I'm going to obviously, you know, remember for the rest of my life. Right. Okay. So Kiki, when are you coming back to Flanagan? And I'm sure you got a lot of fans there and, and they, they want to they wanna, uh, really celebrate with you uh, where you are right now. Uh, do, you have, do you have any plans of uh, coming back uh, and visit uh, Flanagan uh, this season? Um, def I definitely, um, definitely plan on going back, you know, showing my support, you know, when the season starts for them. Um, I've had a couple girls uh, actually DM me about, you know, saying they're looking forward to trying out for the plan again, you know, girls basketball team and any advice I've had for them. So I plan on, you know, going out there and showing my support. Okay. That's awesome. That's, that, that's real nice. Okay, uh, Jacinta, Kiki, I thank you so much for uh, coming on the show, taking the time, and uh, I had a great time. And hopefully we can do this again. Kiki, all the best. To you and Thanks your for team. your time, Kiki. Get some rest and good luck the rest of the season. Stay safe, stay Thanks. healthy, for sure. Tell Big Seal I said what up. <laughs> okay, Kiki, all the best. Oh, we lost her. Okay. We lost her. Okay, Jay, thanks for coming on. For sure. Had a great time. And thanks for uh, having me. Hopefully next week we're at it again. Word to all Big right. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Take care.